1947, a disturbing distress signal was sent out kind of in all directions, like a blind distress signal from some point in the Indian Ocean. Numerous American, Dutch, and English ships, along with other international listening stations, heard this distress signal. And once they triangulated where it was coming from, they sent out a search party to go see who needed help. When they arrived on scene, they discovered something that would become one of the most famous maritime mysteries of all time. This is the story of the SS Orang Madan. What's going on guys, Mr. Ballin here. I was a Navy SEAL for a little while, and now I tell strange, dark, and mysterious stories on the internet. YouTube is my new passion, and I'm gonna be posting at least two times a week going forward. And if you like this kind of content, please right now hit like on this video and subscribe to my channel, turn on notifications so you don't miss any of this stuff. Thank you very much. Before we get into the story, I want you guys to be looking at this through the lens of trying to decipher whether or not you believe this really happened because there is a large percentage of people that say this is just an urban legend. However, there is a couple details that make it really hard to just write off. Number one, you have a number of international ships and listening stations that all reported hearing this same distress signal, and it's a very unique distress signal that we'll get into. In addition, you have the U.S. Coast Guard in one of their you know, fairly credible publications published a story about this case five years after it happened. And then you have the fact that this case has been around since 1947, it's been 70 plus years, and no one's officially debunked it. So let's dive in. In 1947, several Dutch, American, and English ships, along with a number of listening stations, picked up the strange distress signal that was coming from somewhere in the Indian Ocean. The distress signal, which was in Morse code, went like this. An officer, including the captain, are dead, lying in chart room and bridge, possibly whole crew dead. Then there was a burst of indecipherable Morse code, and then it ended with two words. I die. Then silence. One ship that heard this distress signal was the Silver Star. It was an American vessel that was kind of patrolling the waterways around the, the coast of Malaysia, and with the help of other ships, uh, in and around the Indian Ocean and some of the listening stations, they were able to triangulate the location of this distress signal. And they pinpointed a ship called the SS Orang Madan that was located right at the end of the Strait of Malacca, which is the primary shipping lane between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean. And so they, this ship was basically drifting out towards the Indian Ocean. And so the first thing that the Silver Star does is they try to send a message back to the Orang Madan. But after numerous failed attempts, they decide, the captain of the Silver Star decides that we need to go investigate because something is obviously not right here. So the Silver Star tells all the other ships in the area, uh, along with the other listening stations, that they are going to be the search party. They're going to re reroute and head for the Orang Madan because at this point, Anybody that had heard that signal is, is saying, like, what do we do? Like, are we going to go investigate? Are you? After a couple of hours of heading straight for the Orang Madan, uh, they see off in the distance this the ship. You know, from the eyes of these very experienced sailors on the Silver Star, they knew almost immediately that this ship is dead in the water. Uh, it's just drifting, which is not a good sign, especially if, if you combine that with the signal they got. As they get closer and closer to this ship, it becomes creepier and creepier because they're looking up and, and in, the, in the bridge where you know the steering wheel would be, they, they can't make any person out. There's no one up there. There's nobody standing on the edge. I mean, they just sent this distress signal. You would think with a ship that's dead in the water that they would be lining the outside of the ship trying to signal someone down. But no, it's just quiet. No one on board, all lights off, just drifting, bobbing in, in the choppy waters of the Indian Ocean. And so as they get closer, they start blowing their whistle to try to attract anybody on the Orang Madan to signal them back. They're also doing more uh, Morse code to try to get their attention again, not being picked up. And so finally, after all these failed attempts and just the general weirdness around it, the captain of the Silver Star decides, we need to board this ship. So the Silver Star crew members, they knew before they boarded that almost definitely they were going to find something terribly wrong with this ship. There's just too many red flags about it. They were anticipating something bad, 
but I don't think that they were really prepared for just how bad this was going to be. So they board the ship and right away on deck is a number of, of crew members that had passed away. They're all deceased. And the, the mystery really kicks in in the position, the body position of all of the dead crew members. They were all, all on their back with their hands outstretched in front of them as if defending themselves from some unseen assailant above them. Even strangers, they had this abject, this, this look of abject terror on their face as if the final moments before they died were just excruciatingly painful and terrifying. Even the dog was in a position with its teeth bared, it looked like it was growling up into the sky, all of them. And so obviously the, the Silver Star crew members are you know, shocked at what they find. And they're kind of looking at each of these dead crew members and they're like, what is going on? So they make their way up to the bridge and everybody's also dead in the same position, basically fighting with some unseen assailant in their final moments before they pass. The, the person who had been sending out the distress signal had literally slouched over the, the telegraph. Like their finger was literally on the telegraph. He's the only one that was not doing this. He was on the telegraph and had passed away in that position. So they go down into the bowels of the ship. Normally, inside of a steel ship in the boiler room, it's gonna be pretty hot. There's no real ventilation to speak of. Not to mention outside, it was over 100 degrees. They went down into the, the, the boiler room and down into the ship and it was strikingly cold. Some of the crew, crew members from the Silver Star said it felt like it might have been about 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, they found more crew members also passed away, also fighting with something in the air uh, with that look of abject terror on their face. So all of the crew has perished in this very bizarre way. There was no overt damage to the ship. It just appeared that the engine had been turned off, but ultimately the ship had no real damage to it at all. They couldn't find anything. The crew, despite meeting a fairly unfortunate end, uh, also had no signs of outside injury, external injury. Uh, something had obviously caused them all to perish, but there was no injuries outside their body. In addition, all of them showed signs of rapidly decomposing. Uh, considering they had just been ta tapping away that distress signal hours earlier, uh, unless the the person communicating the, the distress signal had been the last one alive for a long time, it doesn't really add up that they had decomposed as quickly as they had relative to when this distress signal was sent. So the captain of the Silver Star, taking into account all of the strangeness, decides not to touch any of the bodies, leave them where they are, get off the ship, tie a tow line to the Orang Madan and tow it in. We're gonna have experts look at this and figure out what happened. And so they attach the tow line, the crew members of the Silver Star, and as soon as they begin to move it, they notice the crew of the Silver Star that smoke has begun billowing out of the uh, inside of the Orang Madan. And so not taking any chances, they cut the tow line and they literally jump back onto the Silver Star right as the Orang Madan explodes. In fact, there was a quote which basically said it exploded with so much force that it was lifted out of the water entirely and then splashed back down and rapidly sank. So now you have no, you have no evidence. You have the testimony of the people that were on the ship, uh, but other than that, you have, you have no evidence. The ship is now gone. The captain of the Silver Star and his crew would just have to go back to the mainland to try to make sense of what they just saw because you have all these people that were involved and want to know what happened. And they're like, well, let me tell you, we saw this horrible thing on board and then it exploded and it disappeared. And so that's where the mystery kind of ends. But, but here we go, let's get into what the primary critique is because that's important here too. And then we'll hear the, the rebuttal, which I think is also pretty important. So people that believe this story is just a legend will point to the fact that there really isn't a good record of the SS Orang Madan ever existing. Um, there's this one very important publication called Lloyd's Shipping Registers where you would expect the Orang Madan to be registered, but they're not. 
Others will say that, well, Orang Madan translates to Man of Madan, and Madan is near a, it's near Sumatra, and that's where they were registered. So they weren't in Lloyd's shipping registers, they were in another registry. But either way, there is contention around whether or not this ship ever existed. But for those who say that this could be true, they say that, well, there's a good reason why those records don't exist, because someone's trying to cover it up. According to a German researcher who had spent decades covering the Orang Madan case, he published in uh, the, the Death Ship on the South Seas, it's a publication from 1953, that the Orang Madan was transporting illegal materials, things like nitroglycerin and potassium cyanide. These are things used to create weapons. And there might have been a leak that led to the, the death of everyone on board. No physical injuries, but they passed away. And then also, after they tied that tow line, uh, the materials could have detonated. You know, perhaps they detonated, that kind of thing. And so... That still leads some questions, right? I mean, then how did, the, how did the Silver Star crew not also get exposed to these chemicals as soon as they got there? Either way, it's a fascinating story, and I hope that you took something from it. So if you haven't already, I would really appreciate it if you liked this video and you hit subscribe on my channel. I'm gonna be, I will be posting at least two times a week going forward content just like this, so I hope you'll join, and that's going to do it, guys. Thank you.